Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to this episode of Time to BS Podcast. And now to thank the sponsors of the show, started with Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First off, it's free. That's right, F R E free. There are creative tools that allow you to record and edit your show right from your phone or even your computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, and many more. It's the best way and everything you need to make a podcast all in one simple place. Download the free Anchor app today or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's anchor.fm today. Greetings, friends. Guess what? We have merch now. Check out our exclusive Unhinged Network gear, including t-shirts, hoodies, and even, wait for it, coffee mugs. Plus some Unhinged show t-shirts and all that stuff. But more importantly, coffee mugs. Check out unhingedsn.com for the official Unhinged Sports Network store today. And, you know, get some stuff and all that glorious stuff. Enjoy the show, guys. Hi, guys. It's Dan. Time to be as podcast and the Unhinged Sports Network have recently partnered with Fubo TV. What is Fubo TV, you might ask? Well, here's the thing. Fubo TV brings you hundreds upon hundreds of channels, including NBC, CBS, Fox, ABC, ESPN, and many more, without the hassle of a cable contract. Don't believe me? Click the link in the description now and start your seven day free trial today. It's time to BS. Hello, friends and everyone on the internet. Welcome to episode 100 of Time to BS. So, it's. We're finally here. Episode 100. And I thought, you know, it would be a good idea to sort of reflect on those, on these past hundred episodes. Where I could just, you know, ramble on, what it feels like, for 10, 20 minutes. Uh, and just really reflect on everything that happened. So, we've had people that have come on, we've had people that leave. Um, but we still keep going. Um, the point is, nothing feels more heartwarming than, you know, just doing the thing that I love to do. And when I, when we started the show, uh, me, Mike, Kyle, Will, and Dave, when we, we, when the five of us started, it was a dream of mine to have a place, a show where people could speak their mind. And just talk whatever the fuck is on their mind. Um, and you you guys, you know, the fans have helped me achieve my dream of just, just doing the thing that I love to do. And I, I thank you all for that. I really do. So... I'm going to stop rambling, so thank you guys for 100 episodes of Time to Be As Podcast, and here's to hundreds more. Cheers, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, we fucking made it. It's time to BS. It's not one of my uh, my proudest moments, that's for and sure. And paid the price this Sunday for Pete the Piper. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh, thank you, Karma. The Church Karma. of Josh Allen. Karma, the yes. The Church of Josh Allen. Church of Josh Allen. LG sins against you. Yes, the Church of Josh Allen is, is not pleased with me right now. A U Stadium podcast. Grace. Uh, still struggling? Shaw. <laughs> and part of the Unhinged Sports Network. And now to start your weekend with us. It's, it's time, time to, to BS. BS. Hey, Rach, how you doing? Cheers to... I'm good. You are not drinking alcohol tonight. I'm drinking alcohol. I lied. <laughs> refraining from that for a little while, so I have wine. Okay, wine is... Wine is I, got a- I got vodka on me. I have some in my fridge, but it would take a lot of time to go make a spicy Bloody Mary. 
There we go. Rachel, it's a full bottle. <laughs> nope. I was drinking, so it's pointless for me to get a cup. There you go. I got my pinnacle right here, so. Plus, that means I'll have to wash another cup in the house. Smart. Smart. Smart lady using her noggin. That mom um, brain. Welcome, everyone. Time to BS episode 100. And cheers to that. Today is a good day. Just waiting to happen. Uh, Mike is unable to join because he's in Oklahoma, busy as all hell. And he's, his ass is also flying to Arizona uh, in the next two days. So I could be wrong with that. I could have the dates mixed up. But regardless, speaking of Mike, he is going to be the next guest for BS Sessions Volume 18, which means BS Sessions is legal. In most states, <laughs> there. in most states here in the United States, <laughs> out of context, but wonderful nonetheless. Yes. Rachel, how you doing? I'm good. I'm decent, you know, me, I'm normal. Of course. Of course. You're Rachel. I'm Rachel. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. Nothing no. wrong with that. Uh, we could be Aaron Donald, though. We could. So, Aaron Donald was was like filed for like assault charges. I think it was last week, was and accused. was accused of assault uh, over in Pittsburgh, where he went to college. And th the guy posted pictures that he punched, supposedly punched in the face. Posted pictures of his scars and markings and black eyes and shit. It's like, first of all. I knew it was bullshit when I saw Aaron Donald got into a fight. First of all, Aaron Donald will not risk $22.5 million I don't know. in salary to get into a fight with some D-bag. Other guys have done it, though. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time. I mean, yeah, true. I wouldn't the evidence to unfold to before we judge, and I was like, who? I was like, what happened? Hold on. I was like, Aaron Donald, that can't be right. Yeah, I was like, yeah. That can't be right here. My thoughts on that one for a while. Yeah, it was like, the fuck happened here? This can't be. This can't be correct. Apparently, it was the whole time. <laughs> today is a vodka drinking day. I I might drink a lot today. I don't know entirely. I'm here for it. There you go. There we go. But yeah, I, I didn't make any sense of that. Aaron Donald punching a dude in the face just because of an altercation. Like, first of all, he's smarter than that. Yeah. He's smarter than that. How's the lighting, by the way? Is it bad? There we go. I turned my lamp on, too, and I was just like, ooh, you look washed out. Turn that back down. <laughs> oh, boy. But what else is going? Edelman retired? Sorry. <sighs> he had it coming, though. The fastest way to make me cry, right there. <laughs> Sorry. Ooh, I was not happy. Not bad. With that. Oh, God, I think it was three days that I was in my feels about it before Oof. I could really it back in my house. Oof, my bad, my bad, it, Rich, my bad. No, it's all right. But it was not pleasant around here. No, it was. I could tell it was not. You <laughs> were not a good place. A bit. <laughs> Let's, under let's understand who Rachel is as a sports fan. She is a Patriots fan who has always supported Julian Edelman since the day. I just got his jersey this past year. Oh. oh it fucking blows. Oh, man, that, man. that one I won in the contest on New Stadium. You just so, got that jersey? I did for it so you know yay all that but still it's like i've just gotten that damn jersey this past year you just got it unbelievable but i bet you i still don't wear it all the time amen to that yeah. what else happened in the world of sports are uh, the yankees are shitting really bad yeah i got destroyed on fucking twitter why i missed that 
Oof. So, uh, this was actually, uh, what's his face? This was earlier this morning. Um, I posted a video of uh, a Ranger defenseman, Jacob Truba, getting clocked in the face by Matt Martin. Yeah, I posted on I posted on Ustaven on Twitter, and That's Ranger awesome. fans took it as, oh, the, like, where is it? Laughing at a potential career-ending head injury. Trupa does charity events in area. Class act, unlike your ass. Let me tell you what I tell these other people. Fuck them nerds, okay? Thank you. Just like that. Fuck them nerds. Thank they don't know. You. They're not giving you food, orgasms, or paying you any of your electric bills. Fuck that noise. You don't need that drama. Thank you. You're welcome. It's for me. There you go. Like, I just, I can't stand social media drama. Yeah, I called him out. I was like, first of all, get to know me first before you make assumptions. Mm-hmm. And, and I was always taught, if you got nothing nice to say, keep your mouth shut. Words have never been spoken. There you go. So, I mean, I, I, I've never really handled social media drama better than that. But. Yeah. Is this a slow week or is it just me? Because it feels like fucking Tuesday right now. No, it's Wednesday, finally. It's I've Wednesday. been on TikTok for it, so I mean. Oh, my God. Rachel has gotten TikTok. <laughs> oh, here. So fucking addictive. It's ridiculous. We are fucked. I'm good yeah. at it though, so I'm not terrible. Unless I'm good at it, but I'm not terrible. So I got that going. I'm doing better than my kid. Holy. The only reason I even have this stupid app is for the what's his face? Uh, for my own personal shit, which is just welding and bullshit. Um. And for this account called Anxiety Gang. That's good. Yeah, which is good. It's awesome. I love it. So, it's pretty you chill. And you also don't have to give anybody your reasons for what you follow. Like yeah, I said before, okay. if they don't pay your bills, give you orgasms or feed you, then you don't have to worry about their opinions. Yeah. So. I've always been, you know, a laid back individual, which is, you know, who gives a fuck? Like, what the fuck are people doing? Jesus. I don't know what happened. I'm so excited. So, the Islanders are getting a new arena, UBS mm-hmm. Arena. It's a beautiful building. I'm now, you don't know that much about hockey, do you? I do not, but I do know who the Bruins are, and I would follow the Bruins. I have been to one hockey game in my life, and it was the Pensacola Flyers. I what else? I know the Hurricanes play around this area. Yep. I think. Um, yeah, Carolina. Yep. Aside from those little tidbits, I don't know much. I know the fighting is hilarious, and I do love that part. Oh, that's awesome. It's so but, good. you know, I'm, I'm one of those people that likes a little bit of violence every now and then. So, that's what I know. It ain't much. That is an inside joke. Agreed. My bad. I go too far No, you're fine. All right, good. So... A uh, little bit of a history with the Islanders. So they've stayed at Nassau Coliseum for 45 years. Okay. And the no, 46, 46 years. And in three years, they stayed at Barclays Center in Brooklyn, where the Nets play. Okay. And they've been trying to get an arena in Belmont for fuck knows how long. In Belmont mm-hmm. Park, uh, where the Belmont stakes are held, if you're into horse racing. Right. Uh, Churchill Downs. I know where that one goes in Kentucky. There you go. So, See, I know this. I don't know all of it, but I mean. There you go. Who so, does? Uh, Belmont Stakes, uh, Belmont, Belmont Park over in uh, just outside of Queens, like literally 10 miles outside of Queens. Um, 
that's where the Islanders' new building is. And they just started putting in the seats. And <laughs> it is a... I almost shed a few tears because, you know, knowing the history of this team the way I do, and the fact I've been used to nothing but disappointment and heartbreak for my entire life as a fan. Like, we're talking 23, almost 24 years of disappointment. Careful, you're starting to sound like a Jets fan. I mean, I am a New Yorker, so. No, but like a New York Jets fan. Yeah, true. I do support them from time. I do support them when they're on. Can't call it. Hey. Hey. Okay, I can. Hex fan, through through. And it's so heartwarming to see, you know, all the seats that are coming, that are starting to come in. It's so nice. It is so heartwarming to see. It's so awesome. Is it, it's I I have no words. It's just it's a heartwarming feeling, and I better fucking get my tattoo of the logo on my very soon. <laughs> fucking hope. <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! What else is going on? Um, did I what? What the fuck? Why is my notifications are going off like a mother. Yeah, I just saw the U Stadium one come out. Play like a jet or something. Yeah. <laughs> or lose, in other words. That's cool. They have a show and we don't on U Stadium. Hmm. Sorry, Ryan. It's not like I've asked you like six times. But. Oh, God. Do you have Apple Music, by the way? I have Pandora. You have Pandora, okay. I love Pandora. All right, good. I have Apple Music, and that's a, it's awesome. But I have so much music bullshit. <laughs> this stinking thing. Uh, five hundred songs. Oh, see, mine doesn't save like that. Mine saves. I can click a band that I like and just like type it in, search it, and it'll like be like, click this for to hear the whole radio station for this band. And it'll play anything related to that song, anything remotely close to it. Yeah. In that genre, which is awesome. So I've got like 12 or so different bands listed, and they range. They're so super eclectic. Oof. So, what kind, what kind of mu- what music do you, do you, uh, what kind of music? I like everything. I listen mostly to rock, like Three Days Grace and um, Disturbed and that kind of stuff in that area. That's my stuff. Um, I do listen to some country. I'm not a fan of the older stuff or like all of it, but some of the newer stuff's okay. My dad listened to the blues when I was a kid, so I learned some of that. Classic rock, obviously. Ooh. Some fellow music I like. Ooh. I'm on so, okay, bye. But, um, I like all kinds of stuff. I'm not really. Ooh. I listen to rap too, actually, so. I see all throughout you stadium. It's either sports, bullshit, or oh, rap talk, or rap. Ugh, yes. It's not even good. It's not even good rap. Mm-mm. I want to tell them all the time, go back to the older days. What you're listening to right now is crap. Thank you. This stuff now is bullshit. Thank you. So the sassy southern bell speaks her ways. I do try. You do. You do. Yeah, that's my phrase is I try. I mean, I don't know. Oh. All you can do is try. Do you, um, I'm sorry we're talking about the Jets, but. No, it's okay. Fucking Zach Wilson. Do you think he goes number two? I, wasn't it him that was, that was two the whole time, wasn't it? Yeah. He was yeah. ranked as the second best quarterback the whole time, and I don't buy it. Trevor Lawrence was supposed to be number one. Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. I don't know. Zach, I guess. Yeah, probably. He looks like blonde Jesus, except without a goatee. <laughs> ah. They call him football Jesus. Why? I don't know. But, like, 
Who names, your, who names your fucking quarterback football, Jesus? Last time I checked, there was a quarterback by the name of Drew Breezes. And that's the closest you will get. I uh, down the play. So, I mean. Yeah, but also, Tom Brady's wife is a fucking angel. That's for sure. Yeah. Yes, she is. Yeah, just a bunch of Just like Tom Brady is a god. Yes, he is. I'm super pissed that he's not on my team anymore. Are you? Yes. I know. It's a trick question. Because you were the first one to say, Scam Newton. He is a fucking scam. He sucked. I mean, he sucked three years ago. And then we we picked him this past year. Why? I don't fucking know. Because he was sucked for three years. Why do we want his buff? I don't know act? why people give him a chance still. I understand <sighs> A chance if they're good within the past year would be the exception. But three years and he sucked, and you still want to give him a shot, BB? Come on now. We can do better. We are not a poverty yeah. brand. <laughs> oh, here we go. Come here. Check this out. Check What's out up, that shit. Uh, here we go. Yes, yes. Bye. Mommy. What? I want to. Mommy. I want, um, in just a minute. So, but yeah, I, you know, he is scam Newton and to me. I mean, he scammed us out of a good quarterback. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, I, I've never understood it. Why, you know, Cam Newton is, you know, still in this fucking league. I don't know. And I mean, this has absolutely nothing to do with his wardrobe, which I will also pick and critique at because it's ridiculous. But his 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 game has gone. Yeah. Game. That's true. He is playing poverty ball. If he wants to play the way he's playing, he needs to go to like the Bengals or the Jets. Yeah. Is the upstart because those teams suck ass in the beginning. They could actually use an itty bitty pick me up, and that's all he'd be good for. Did you, uh, what's his face? What the fuck? Police are searching for a 30-pound turtle sculpture in West Hampton here on Long Island. Huh. What the fuck? Cool. I'm just scrolling through Twitter. I'm like, what the fuck? Well, it's not I... in my hand. It's in your Hampton, so. Yes, this is a fair point. This is a fair point. Ah, uh, fucking, what the fuck? Stupid email, stamp! I get random shitty spam emails, I'm like, stamp! I don't listen to anything if I don't have to. I barely pick up my phone anymore if it rings, I'm like, mmm. What if it's me spamming your phone that Tom Brady wants back, goes back to the Patriots? I would totally answer that call. And then I would bitch you out for telling me a lie. <laughs> you would you would somehow bring your ass to New York. We're friends like that. I would totally do that to you. I know you would. I know you would. Why the fuck are you telling me this? I know you would. You would 100% do that to me. You would call me out on your stadium or Twitter or some shit. You would do that. I wouldn't do it out loud. I'd call you and do it. I'd do it in private. Yeah, fair point. That's a good point. I don't want to be like, why is she being such a bitch today? Me. Nah, but I, I, I know I deserve it if I were to do that. <laughs> I'm not going to, you know, go up to some random person and be like, Gee. like, if someone were to give me an attitude first, I'm like, well, fuck you too. Yep. Yeah, you pick your... So I match energies. You pick your energy and you tell, pick me out. Pick out how we going to be today because it's up to you. I can fix your crap yeah. and knock that bitch crap. Pretty much, yeah. Like, I've never... I, I've, I've tried to surround myself with good people. And I got hair on my nose. I don't know why. It's from my hair that's, like, falling out of my head. Yeah. It's like, you know when you get, like, a hair on your nose... And it's just above your eyes. So it's like you're just trying to fucking get it, and you can't fucking get it. I do that when I get like a dot of makeup or something on the top of my nose, like brown or black, and I can just see it, but I don't know what it is. And I'll sit there and 
drive myself nuts trying to figure out what there's the nothing it, there's nothing that ruins your day quite like your eyesight being fucked up because your field of vision is everything or some shit like you need your field of vision. You need that fucking vision. It sucks. Um, like I've got was it um Fuck what the hell is it? I can't think of what it is now. My vision is screwy. I can't see anything out of this eye, not really. This eye is meh. What happened? Just bad eyesight. Just oh, that's not over. good. Just over time. Have you considered glasses? I do have glasses. You do have glasses. But that I need for the bad eye is scratched all the shit because I have kids. So not gonna lie, you would look like one of those like a librarian, but like the librarian in like those films that has like the yardstick also. <laughs> or the paddle. Yeah, pull my hair out, ready? No, 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 the hair down. Hair down would be better. Hair down. Oh, fun hair in the back. Down, kind of... Hair down with the glasses. Yeah, there you go. Hair down with glasses. There we go. <laughs> Someone, oh wait, I got my have a These don't have lenses in them anymore, but. Yup, there we go. There we go. Dan wins. Danny wins. <laughs> my good ones are, um, they're dark. They're dark. And and those, are the, those are the perfect glasses. That's exactly what was, I had in mind. Oh, yeah? That's exactly what I had in mind. Oh, mm. man. That's funny. That's really funny, actually. Oh, can I tell you something? Sure, what we got? Just because this is the most exciting thing that had happened to me all day. That I made a comment on TikTok, right? And it had so many amazing amounts of views, but the content that it was for was about a horse named Seabiscuit, right? And a woman riding a man like Seabiscuit. That was the that was the in general comment on the post. I'm still editing my book. I'm on chapter seven. Okay. The spicy scene was chapter six. So chapter seven is where it's kind of calmed down a little bit. I shit you not. Two hours after I made that post. I get to a spot in the book where it talks about the girl going to do something. She's like, maybe I should tell this woman that I'm going to ride him like Seabiscuit. I was like, shut the shut fuck, fuck up. I took three years ago. What the fuck? I was like, what? I know where I'm supposed to be in life. <laughs> My priorities are straight. I am right where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> I know where the fuck I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> That's what fate is made of. Finding shit that happens right then and there at the same time. That's pretty. We cool. are rolling. <laughs> That's done, awesome. I haven't done anything bad yet, so. Mm. Yes. Jesus, thank God we are a time to BS. Thank God. I love, I love this hour. What are you talking about? Yeah, this is true. We're. Does wine usually do that to you? <laughs> wine do what to me? Oh, you know. <laughs> Actually, no. I'm still pretty mellow. All right. I haven't had a whole lot of it, but um, there's not a whole lot. I mean, I've probably got a glass left in it, but I mean, if I wanted to go faster, I'll sit and chug it, but I mean, I might have to edit just a little bit more later on, so I probably don't need to get too drunk or I'll go straight. <laughs> oh, <laughs> boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, what's going on here? So Robin Leonard spoke for about 10 minutes. Uh, Robin Leonard, who is a uh, former Islander goaltender, current goaltender for the Vegas Golden Knights over in the NHL, mm -hmm. um, has said he's extremely upset. With and frustrated with the NHL, who has said players were promised uh, COVID quarantine, isolation restrictions uh, would ease if players were vaccinated, and he said they were lied to. Now, keep now for those who don't know who Robin Leonard is, uh, I would get Kim on, but she's currently busy uh, with fuck knows what. But Kim is the biggest Robin Leonard fan I know. 
for obvious reasons, and that's a different that's a story for another day. Um, but Robin Leonard is a huge mental health advocate, as as as, as our, ourselves uh, over on this podcast. Um, he has said time and time again. The NHL needs to focus on mental health. We need to focus on mental health as a as a society, as a country, you know, as a nation, as fucking everyone around this world. We yeah. need to focus on the importance of mental health. And I said, thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Like, Marshall Lynch said best, protect your chicken. Did he say that? I don't know. I lost track. I also said, I'm only here so I don't get fined, so. There we go. But, I, you know how I am with mental health importance and shit. I mean, mm-hmm. fuck. We all have to be, though. I mean, come on. Hey, there you go. You can't just be sipping vodka like this guy. Hmm. Uh, football is going to 17 games. Yeah, seven. We didn't talk about that last week. That's right. Uh, mm-hmm. The NFL has approved a 17 game season. Yes. But what's worse is that the NFL also approved single digit jersey numbers. Of course they did. Great. The NFL trying to be more like college. That's wonderful. I hate hmm. it. I really hate it. Proved a relaxation of rules for the numbers and players of certain positions can wear because of expanded practice squads, running backs, wide receivers, tight ends, defensive backs, and linebackers can all wear numbers in the single digits now if they choose. That's so dumb. So much extra shit to deal with. It's like so dumb. Hey, Trevi, can you hand me my glasses? They're on my dresser. Thank you. Oh, God. She's getting glasses. Now that I got a little person to go do my bidding. There you go. Yes, my blue ones. Smart. Your blue ones? Yeah. Yes. Thank you, and you're so careful with them after you already scratched the shadow. Yup. Yup. I'm telling you, you gotta pull the... You gotta pull the hair up into a bun or something. I'm telling you, it works. It works so much better going down. It works so much better when the hair is down. There we go. But yeah, they're all that side's all scratched to crap. Mommy. So it's like I can barely see out of it anyway. Mommy. But yeah. Mommy. See, good, good glasses. Ma, why are you have that pants? No, I do not have that pants. Go find Michael. Are you doing? Me? I'm talking. Go find Michael. Mommy, I want a gummy snack now. I'm not giving you a gummy snack. Now. Nah. Bye. Kids are so much fun. Oh, man. Do you miss the fireball yet? <laughs> yes, she does. <laughs> I got this. Uh, we have paper. If, if it, I mean, please don't play. If it wasn't because it had, like, the whiskey in it, and I'm not, or the wheat in the whiskey, and I'm not supposed to have that right now. So if it wasn't for that, I'd still be drinking it. But. When I don't drink it, I notice that the swelling in my foot and the swelling in my knee, it goes down a little bit. So How is it I'm, doing, by the way? It's still arthritis, gout. Sucks. It still sucks. But, I mean, I'm still using a cane to get around. I'm still taking a leave every morning. So, I mean, but the fact that I can walk is kind of a bonus. I'm not upset with that. I, I tire out easily. I can't pick up anything. I can't bend down to pick up anything off the floor. If it's on the floor, it is dead to me. I ain't touching it. It's going to live there. <laughs> It's, it's gone. Stay there. I ain't touching it. Mm-mm. How's my neck, got- by the way? Huh? How's my neck doing? Is it bad still, or is it good? No, it's still good. If you get worrisome, get some, get some um, foundation. Or some concealer, not foundation. Get concealer. I could get yep. also an ice cube, also, and just rub it on my skin. Or I think, um, what did they tell us in high school? Cavity protection toothpaste works? Yes. Yes, it does. Cool tip for us, or for me, but you know, using the head. I was I was a good girl in high school, so I didn't really have to do that. (laughs) What happened? It's not funny. We had a whole BS sessions episode on this range. (laughs) 
Oh, man. This is hey. fun. Innocent until proven guilty. You can't prove shit. <laughs> I can't prove shit. Unless if I go back in time somehow. <laughs> no, I was actually a pretty good person. Pretty good, pretty good kid. So was I. I didn't party. I didn't do any stupid shit. I, mean, I started drinking when I was 16, but I mean, I had my reasons and they weren't very good ones. But still, but I didn't do anything else. I did not drink until I was 22, and you remember that day? Yes, I believe I do. <clears throat> just, just like I remember the day Splash got on the U and was like, I lost my... Hello, hello, random person with a mop for a face. No, he's fine. We he hasn't know. shaved in four years. He's fine. I'm on this podcast. No. Goodbye. That's okay. Just... Wait, okay, go out. Bye. It's another one of my children. See? Have multiples. It's so much fun. Bye. Bye. What's up, Bye. dude? Bye. Okay. Bye. Okay. I never leave you alone. Well, that's true. There you go. <laughs> Only the big one hasn't come in here yet because he's on his Xbox in his room. I won't see him again until I call his name. <laughs> Oof. Oof. Oh, man. Yeah. What else do we got here in this world? What the fuck? Jalen Waddle is top receiver in the draft. What the fuck? What the fuck is going on here? Things. Who the fuck? Who holds, first of all, this person twisted their wrist around. And drank a like they twisted their wrist around like this and grabbed a beer this way, like they're jo they're quadruple jointed in their hands. No, no, they bent their hands. They bent their fingers backwards. Molly, I love you. Get out of my office. I don't know if I can do all of that. <clears throat> no, it was impressive. And this person drank a UFO beer that. Wow. Way. Like, wow. that was impressive. I'm, I'm looking at them like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, that's great. Right. May say that? No, you may not say that. You may get out of my office. My bad. No, you're fine. He's so worse. He was watching me watch TikTok today. How many oh, God. Yeah. Oh, God. Give me two seconds. Let me lock this door. Yeah, no problem. Hey, ah, stop out. with me, ladies and gentlemen. Nope, just got to lock the door. Oh, God. <sighs> Get out. Thank you. Goodbye. Thanks for coming. And there you are. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, all right. The so. schedule gets their release date. What was it? May 22nd? Wait, what now? May 21st is the... What's his face? Um, The NFL releases their schedule. I thought we already got our schedule. I already have mine. No, like the actual like dates of the games. We have the oh. opponents. We oh, have the actual opponents. Might not, might not have the dates, but I already have the opponents. There you go. Um, Seahawks linebacker Alden Smith booked in St. Bernard, uh, Louisiana, with second-degree battery from an alleged April 17th assault outside of a business in Louisiana. Damn. He's fucked. Sounds like it. Do you remember Alden Smith? I've heard the name. Yeah. I couldn't tell you what spot he plays, but I've heard the name. Yeah. Oh, May 12th, excuse me. May 12th, the schedule comes out. Okay. I think I predicted we would have, like, 11 wins with what ours was, with who we had. But depending on who we get at QB, God, just anybody better than Cam Newton. Please. God. Ugh. Robin Leonard continues to be furious. Being bipolar, one of the things they tell you not to do is is isolation. He says he's frustrated in regard to mental health issues during the COVID-19 pandemic. Great! Super. Oh, my God. I'm Oh, my God. Just, I, just confuses the fuck out of me. Oh, boy. Oh, have you heard about what's 
happening um, Saturday, April 24th. What is Saturday? April 24th. What is on the 24th? I did not know. It's all over TikTok, and I don't know if it's anywhere else. Um, but it's supposed oh, to be. Oh, yes. I know, I know what you're talking about. Yes. I'm not going to be leaving my house. I My anxiety is too high for all that crap. Oh, God. So. Uh, I always get weirded out about people being around me anyway. So if I have to actually stop and watch every single person around me and get. No, I ain't leaving my house. <laughs> so allow. So. Is this a good topic to for me to talk about or for us to talk about? Everybody needs to be aware of their surroundings. So, some dipshits decided to, I don't know, let's just say, have a National Sexual Assault Day on May 20th, on April 24th. Yes, it was supposedly a joke on TikTok made by three or four guys, if I remember the clip right, talking about... For the women who clowned them, they were going to come back for them and do what they wanted. And so, Here's when, I got, bad. when I got on TikTok, every single southern country, any kind of boy, good old boy type, every one of them was like, try, see what happens. I'm like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There you go. But I ain't going to my house. <laughs> there you go. So here's where Dan gets mad. Um. That's fucked up, one, for people to even joke about it. Agreed. And the fact that, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, the world would be a lot better without TikTok. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Okay, well, I like TikTok. I mean, I don't, okay. I don't like all of TikTok, obviously. I don't follow everybody's everything, but I like TikTok. Only Rachel <laughs> and two other people I know get TikTok. There we go. Done. We have only been on it a week, though, so I mean... It'll probably fizzle out at some point for me, but for right now, it's still fun. But the fact that this is going on is disgusting. Yeah. And, you know, the fact that, you know, this isn't being talked about more is absurd to me. Yeah. You know, I heard. Like, some of the police and stuff around the areas and stuff, they know about it, and they're watching out for it, but there's not a whole lot they can do until things start happening. No. Oh. But anyone who even... If I'm going out, and I see, you know, guys going up to ladies and doing fuck knows what, I'm throwing fists. Yeah. I'm throwing fists. And those who know me know I'm a protective motherfucker. Even if I don't know you. Yeah. You lay your hands on any woman. It's going down. It is going mm -hmm. down. One of the guys that I was talking, or that posts on there a good bit, and he was giving the advice that, ladies, if you feel like you're being followed or you feel like you're going to be attacked, just walk up to the biggest guy you see that you don't know. Obviously, you probably won't know them if you're by yourself. And just kind of grab on to him and be like, hey, yeah, you're with me right now for this, for the moment. Because if some, if you do that to some random guy and he looks behind you and sees what's going on, he's probably going to try to stick up for you at the very, very least to make sure nothing happens to you. And that's good advice, honestly. Yep. It's better than running and being chased down. I have this picture. Give me a second. According to users, a group of men have declared April 24th as National Day for carrying out rape and sexual assault. It is not clear where the trade is orchestrated or exactly who is responsible for beginning it. And the second I saw TikTok, I was ready to lose my fucking mind. Yep. Because I have a love-hate relationship with TikTok. Because these fucking numbskulls think it's so goddamn funny to post this shit. It just pisses me off, man. It pisses me off. Me too. Subject change? I would drink more, but this is too easy. Yeah. Let's see if we can get Hector on this crap. Let's end this segment real quick. I was going to ask you what your sandwich was this week, but okay. Oh, actually, yeah. Croissant, uh, my, the sandwich from uh, last week? Mm -hmm. uh, it was ham. It was honey glazed ham, American cheese, BLT with honey mustard. Homemade. That sounds really good. Oh, God. 
Oh, so I can't have meat right now. So otherwise, yeah, yeah that's um, kind of really good. I'm basically sticking to what's healthy, veggie type. No, any kind of purines in my system, or you got to get all the uric acid out and all that crap. So it's mostly veggies, veggies, and more fucking veggies, and no liquor. <laughs> Like, I don't want to detox my body, but I guess I don't have much of a fucking choice. <sighs> yeah, let's 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 change the subject and get Hector on here so we can get his <laughs> thoughts on the Super League. Be right back, guys. Hello, Hector. How you doing, my man? I'm good, man. Doing great. Yeah, just walk my dog so he wouldn't be any any bit of a pain for y'all, so. <laughs> All right, so joining us here for episode 100 uh, to discuss some European football. So that means these members of Instagram FC. Um, I want to start with what the fuck? I mean, you had the same reaction as me. Uh, with the European Super League, I mean, basically what it was, just owners of the top, some of the top clubs in, in all of Europe, obviously six from the English Premier League, from Hold that thought, hold that thought for a second, Rachel, I think your fan is, I think it's your fan, it's, it's in a fear, it's a cross, cross noise. I'm sorry, just that. No, it sounds like a motor's going off or some shit. You're also sitting on my keyboard, so... How's that? That's why. Oh, okay. Yeah. I had you sitting right next to my computer just because it was a good prop, but I can hold There we go. Yeah, so continue, Hector. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, basically, the 12 teams that everybody's talking about is Manchester United, Manchester City, uh, Chelsea... Arsenal somehow, I don't know. They're not necessarily looking great. I don't know why they would be deemed worthy of being in the Super League as well as Tottenham. Um, and then obviously Real Madrid, which is the club I actually support, um, and Barcelona, Atletico Madrid. But basically all the big clubs, and ironically enough, some of them are actually owned by some American uh, groups. Yeah. Uh, Stan Kroenke is the one of the owners for, for Arsenal. Is. Yeah, uh, it's, it's terrible. I do support Arsenal and and I've I've hated him since he came in to, since he bought the the club. Uh, it's it's uh, essentially what they're doing is they're trying to improve Champions League, uh, if, if that's what they're saying. But honestly, it's for them to get more money. Um, that's that's all they're really trying to do is a way for them to cons- get more money, get more TV viewership, and obviously these are the big clubs in the world, and I, and that would help them to people are going to watch those games everybody wants to see juventus versus real madrid or barcelona versus manchester united like the people would pay to see those matches uh, but the only thing that sucks is that there's no way to get a spot because i mean I'll, well i mean there is five qualifying spots but that no one's not entirely sure what that means of uh, you know does that mean like top of your league that's going to move you in there uh, no one's not entirely sure on that one the, the, the basics is, no matter what, these teams are always mm-hmm. going to be in this Super League. And that's the that's the issue that the fans have. Um, UEFA and FIFA, them coming in to kind of like try to stop this from happening, it's just that they're care- they also care about their bottom line as well. If yeah. they lose those clubs in the Champions League and they're not, you know, they don't want to see them competing in, you know, doing all this stuff and not earning their right to compete in those those extra tournaments. It, so that hurts their bottom line. That's that's if, if anybody wants to know what UEFA and FIFA are doing, it's just they're trying to cover their investment. But the fans, the thing that they don't like is is the beauty of having you know a, a Leicester City who re- you know not that long ago won the English Premier League, one of the biggest upsets that the, that people that makes people love the game so much. You know they earned their spot to win to win in England and then yeah. go into compete in the Champions League. That's what people like seeing, like seeing those underdog stories happen. And I mean, you're seeing it now in Italy with Atalanta. That's that team that's kind of earning their right and competing in the Champions League as well. You lose that when you when you create this Super League because obviously they don't want those teams because they're not going to get them extra money. Yeah, um, you lose the competitive edge. You see it a lot with uh, the NBA, especially 
where you have teams that are literally tanking for top draft picks. You have team. It's a two team league in the NBA now. It's been it's been that way for probably the last five, six, seven years, and you're starting to see a little bit now with the NF with the National Football League, um, where it's sort of like a four or five team race, but for the Super Bowl and. The only the only team that the only league that probably doesn't do it is hockey and to an extent baseball. Baseball used to be that with the Yankees, but not as much anymore. Hockey, not so much. It's hockey is all gas, no brakes, like balls to the wall, let's go. Like mm-hmm. last one out, let's go. And with with the Super League, you're losing, you know, the competitiveness. You're losing all of that. And what I didn't understand the whole point of the Super League when I when I first heard about, it, I was like, oh, this is. Like, I know these. I know these clubs. I know who they. I know what who they are. I know Bar. I mean, who doesn't know Barcelona? Who doesn't know Barcelona? Arsenal. I mean, Manchester City, Real Madrid. I keep going and going. Who doesn't know these clubs? The problem, and it's all these clubs, and like, wait a minute, and I'm starting to see, you know, it's like, in in men's basketball in the NCAA tournament, it's like in Kentucky, Duke, Kansas, North Carolina, all form their separate league. It's like, what the hell? And I see where you, I see why fans are upset, and I completely understand it. No, yeah, for sure. I mean, like I said, the fans' issue is that you're robbing, you're depriving, especially like the fans that are of those small clubs. Because they're, I mean, you know, with the with Americans, most of American fans that do support teams in Europe, most of them are the it's the big teams in Europe. But in Europe, there's the loyalty; they support their local clubs. And I mean, you know, you have that small club that gets a chance to play against Arsenal or Manchester United. That's big for their for their fan base because that's that helps that club as well because they're getting some more revenue because they're bringing in such a they're getting tv time they're getting those things and that helps them as well so it's an irony that the that you know the big clubs are talking about that they're trying to save football and say you know save the game um but you're also going to hurt the little teams the little teams are the ones that are going to be most affected by it because for them those opportunities to play in in sanford bridge and play in in san siro those are huge moments for them, yeah. and that's what's that's what's being robbed from them from not letting them compete in Champions League and not letting them, you know, compete in the Premier League, is that that's what you you're hurting the little clubs, and and I think that's what the big clubs aren't understanding, and they're thinking that they're saving the game when really they're not. This is why people are saying you're killing the game when you do this, because you're you're essentially you know this is a sport that started from it's a it's a poor man sport. I mean, ironically enough, as we're talking about players that are. Are expected to get like two hundred million, you know, bill, you know, million dollar transfers, but this all started from just guys coming out of work and playing this game, and that's how they started these leagues. And there's still some leagues that right now they're just these guys play Sunday, you know, still have their regular jobs. They're just playing on the side, and they get a chance to play against an Arsenal, you know. Yeah. Um, so it's still a going thing, and the tradition is there. Um, but like I said, the a big picture, I mean, I can understand with what they're trying to do. Obviously, the pandemic hurt everybody but they they're they're thinking as if the pandemic only affected them when they don't realize that they're smaller clubs that the pandemic definitely hit yeah. them yep. and those chances to play against a Chelsea and and a and an Arsenal that helps them and i i think that's what that that's what hurt everybody else the super league could work but it would have to work in a way where there's there's going to be a way that er, there's a qualifying factor that not just the big clubs are going to get in there if you if you fin- like say basically champions league is that's what that's basically what the Champions League is. Like if you li- read the format and the kind of the way they were structuring it, the matches, the schedules, and all that, essentially it's the Champions League, and and that's the part that's like if you really wanted this to evolve, you could have the Super League. You just couldn't do it without including the other clubs as well. Yep. So how does this affect? I, I read something that it also affects the Olympics in some kind of way. Uh, the Olympics in Tokyo over the summer. Um, I don't know if you read that or, or potentially it, it, it affects a little bit with, with, I think it was FIFA or the Olympics or the, no, it was the World Cup actually. It was yeah, the, World Cup. Uh, the, the Olympics, FIFA has no, no sanctions in, in, in the Olympics. 
But I mean, obviously, if you're an American born player and you're under the age, well, actually, U.S. won't be participating in the Olympics because they couldn't qualify. But yeah. um, but if you're under, you know, under the age of 23, obviously, you you're you're qualified to be part of the Olympic team if, if your club allows you. So that's a whole other issue there. But like I said, FIFA's also thinking about their bottom line and they know Super Le- the Super League can definitely hurt UEFA, which is obviously a part of, of FIFA. That's one of the one of the sections of, of FIFA. And so they're like, okay, well, you guys are taking money away from me. So because I get some of that Champions League money as well. So we can't have this. And that's when they added that that they would actually ban players that play for these Super League teams if they choose to go through the Super League. And that would obviously hurt the players because every player, no matter where they come from, they want to play for their countries. No matter how small their country is, they want to play for their countries. And that's what FIFA knew directly, that they could impact the players. And obviously you saw players speaking against their, their, their clubs that are part of the Super League, yep. which you saw managers, players, fans all going against the ownership. So this was clearly owners thinking that they could they, – they didn't underestimate the fans is what basically happened. Yep. Uh, yep. But, yeah, you, you de- if you deprive a player – and that's the irony of it all because the reason why these clubs are so well looked at and all that is because of the players that they bring in. They bring in a Cristiano Ronaldo. They have a Lionel Messi. All those those big names. Well, if that can't compete, especially for Cristiano Ronaldo and Messi, this is, could be their last World Cup. So I'm like, wait, wait, wait. You're telling me I can't compete in the World Cup? No. Uh, fuck you, Juventus, and fuck you, Barcelona. I'm going to go play with Leicester City or PSG because they're not in the Super League. And I'll still get to go. And, I'll still get to play with a good club, and I still get to go and go ahead and compete in the World Cup. Yeah, it's it's a complete fucking shit show, if you ask me. Um, I'm glad we actually I'm glad we actually have an expert on this who can actually you know talk to us about who can actually talk to us about this instead of you know giving us gibberish bullshit like you know Sports Center, ES like ESPN or some shit. Like, no, you know your shit. The second I saw that the Super League was forming, I'm like, I gotta get Hector on this because he, he's probably with, is Kelsey maybe to a degree. I mean, oh, no, I Kel- Kelsey knows the shit. I mean, no, I, I get that. We got FC together for a reason, but yeah. There you go. But like, you know your shit, man. You you know your shit. You know the ins and outs of this of this shit. You really do, man. So, like. It affects UEFA and FIFA, and it affects the World Cup on obvious reasons. What else does the Super League potentially affect? I mean, that's basically what it is. I mean, at, at the end of it all, it just it affects the small clubs. It affects it, it. Obviously, it would affect the players if they can't compete in the World Cup. And and, and, I, and somehow, if they would have continued to do it, it, and FIFA and UEFA would have ended up pushing what they were going to do. And I mean, even the leagues that were like La Liga, EPL, and Serie A. They even said that they would actually not allow these clubs to compete in their league. So that's including domestic clubs and their league titles. And that's also revenue that these clubs are going to be missing out on. Which, at the end of all, their goal is to get more money. And they're going to lose money in the process because if they would have, if they would have chosen to continue. And technically, it's it's not the end of the of the Super League. It's more like a to be continued. Because there's, yeah. there's still three clubs that still are kind of trying to restructure it and try to maybe, maybe write it out a little bit better. Um, because they, I, once again, they didn't, they didn't expect the fans to have this much of a, of an outcry for it. Yeah. And I mean, that, that's the thing that at the end of the day, I don't think people realize how powerful soccer fans are. Um, I think that that's the one thing that you got to take from it is because the, the people in Europe, it's a whole different breed of fandom there. Whole and, different and, game, and, yep. and they, and they clearly showed it. Um, and that's just. I think that's the only thing you can really take away from it is you can't underestimate the fans. I think that's for the owners. And and that's the thing that, that most of these owners, they have no real connection to the club. Like, they no. don't necessarily have, like, a respect to its history. They should have a respect to the history, but they don't. But guess who does? The fans. Yep. We do. Um, and, and the Super League is only based in Europe. It doesn't affect, you know, MLS um, over here in the States, obviously, for different reasons. For because it's two different leagues. It's two different, you know. How how are the? Because I never really got into you know MLS. I I I know Champions League to a little bit. I know Premier League to a little bit. Um, are the rules in MLS different as opposed to you know European League to a degree or 
Am I drifting somewhere too far? Um, I mean, at, at the end of the day, oh, they're playing soccer. That's what if you if there's like a similarity, they're playing the game the exact same way. They're still, you know, the same parameters on the field. It, it's still you score a goal. That's a point. You know, it's, it's that same basics. The only thing is that I would say MLS is different from Europe. Obviously, Europe doesn't have a playoff. Like, you know, at the end of the season, whoever finishes first, that's the champions. That's in mo- majority of the leagues in Europe. Whereas in the MLS, you have an Eastern and Western Conference, um, yep. you know, Certain, I, I believe right now, I think it's still the, the top six or top eight teams qualify to the playoffs. And then that's where, so, I mean, that's the only thing that's different is that there's a playoff. And it's not like they're the only league that has a playoff system. Um, I mean, Mexico has a playoff system of their own. So that's probably the only thing that's different. Also, there's a salary cap in the MLS versus in Europe is basically whatever you have in your in your pocket that you can go ahead and use it. Um, so the MLS has a salary cap there. They do things a little bit differently. They don't follow the the FIFA schedule. So um, whenever we have FIFA, uh, international breaks, MLS still continues where, you know, and that's kind of sucks because they do have international players on some of their rosters. So they end up essentially losing their best players during that period. So there's some things yeah. different with the MLS, but um, I mean, I do have my issues with the MLS, but I think that I, I'm fine with the playoff format at the way they do it because I think here in here in the U.S., it needs to be like that so that fans could kind of watch, mainly watch soccer. I think the goal should be just to watch soccer, but for them to at least understand it, like, okay, they got to go to the playoffs. And then you still, it's that feeling that your team is still in it. Like you just got to be in it to win it. Um, And and so I think with the MLS, even though it's different from Europe, I think it's fine the way it is because we still have to be able to have (laughs) some sort of common language with America. And yep. I mean, the most common language in America is like, oh, we get playoffs. So, and I'm fine with that. Yeah, there you go. There you go, man. Uh, we're going to take a quick break so we can uh, play some advertisements here on break. But uh, Hector, thank you for joining us, man. I greatly appreciate the, taking your taking your sweet ass time to, to go uh, join the bullshit department, if you put it that way. <laughs> uh, man, no problem. No problem. Uh, it was great. Um, I'm glad you reached out, man. Uh, I mean that that's what we we're here for man it, you know we're all part of the same now where we we should definitely be looking out for one another so definitely greatly appreciate it damn straight man if you ever need a uh, any uh hockey knowledge let me know <laughs> uh, I'll think about that more southern information I got you there you go all right let's take a quick break guys and listen to some advertisements along the way woo What's up, guys? It's Dan from Time to BS Podcast. Are you looking to get your team's favorite gear at the best prices out there? Look no further than Fanatics.com. There's always some great deals with Fanatics. Every league, every team at the best prices. Get your fan on at Fanatics.com. What's up, guys? Thanks to our friends at U Stadium for supporting this podcast. Do you like sports and debates? Oh, we know you do. Don't lie to us. Download the free U Stadium app today and talk all sorts of things sports and even earn some great prizes. Debate with all kinds of fans from the NFL to the NHL, even UFC and many more. Download U Stadium on Apple and Google today. It's time to BS. Hey Mike. Yes sir. I got a question for you. Go ahead Dan. Did you know that Rob Van Dam's wife is a porn star? I don't know that. <laughs> How did I miss this? <laughs> and what's her name? <laughs> you know Go giggle. I'm going to Google this. <laughs> A U Stadium podcast. All right, for those watching on YouTube, you will notice that you will be stuck with the fucking logo for the remainder of the show. But. For those listening on, you know, our podcast platforms, you will basically hear us, uh, myself, and John is here on the cruise hey. game. What's up, bro? How you been? I've been good, man. Just chilling as always. Chilling as always. Yeah, you could say that. Uh, we are watching hockey. We have splits ring going between the Rangers Flyers game and the Islanders Caps. So we're gonna watch some hockey while talking some bullshit and sports as we always do. Um. Oh, 
Pajot, oh, for God's sakes. Um, John is in his Mark Messier. Those, those jerseys, the, am I wrong to say the white Ranger jerseys are the best in the league? No. Because they're so nice. I would say so. The they're white, so nice. I would say it's either the white Rangers or the white Blackhawks. Ooh. I like the home Blackhawks jersey, though. No, to me, the white Blackhawks is the epitome of the Blackhawks jersey. Ooh, can we argue the Nordiques? Yeah, those the are Nordiques classic. The Nordiques jerseys are nice, though. The old Winnipeg Jet jerseys. From the, the original one... incarnation. What the fuck happened there with Samsonov? What the hell? Islanders almost had a goal within the first two minutes of the hockey game. The Rangers are going to play. Are playing the Flyers, so this is probably going to be a six, a nine to three game in favor of the Rangers. Uh, if you guys get that joke, then there you go. But uh, yeah. uh, you get that joke, you've unfortunately watched Carter Hart this year. So I saw a meme the other day of a. Uh, You've seen Infinity War, right? Avengers? Yeah. So, uh, did the, are the Knicks good? Yes. Yeah. What did it cost? The Yankees. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, and there's too much they talent. They had it coming, though. That's there's, the thing. There's too much I talent on that lineup for them not to get I it together. I saw it coming, though, from a mile away. The Yankees will pick it up, but I don't think they're any World Series contenders. No. By the way, our drinks of choice today are Guinness and Angry Orchard, so nothing too crazy today. Um, yeah, but I, the Yankees did it themselves. They did. They focused way too much on the home run game. Like, the Red Sox right now, forget it. They're winning the, I mean, it's too No, early. because the Yankees built this team with so much arrogance. So much we are gonna we're the Yankees. We can do we can yeah, do it this sure. way. The rest of the league does it this way. They just I like I blame Brian Cashman being arrogant on the way yeah. the Yankees look. It's not it's not just that. It's the fact of the Yankees, rightfully so, avoided the one thing they should have done when Judge was a rookie. They avoided pitching. Yeah. They avoid the pitching game. And, like, the pitchers are like, oh, if, if I give a... pitch in to win in the playoffs. If I give... If the pitchers are like, if I give up two runs, I'm losing this game. You if need you're the Yankees. You need pitch in to win in the playoffs but is the issue. They're not hitting. The Yankees aren't hitting. So then they have nothing. Mm -hmm. It's... It's... It's bad. It's really bad right now. Um... I told a friend of mine, hey, listen, 80 games into the year, if they're still under, if like, if they're 20 or 30 games under 500, trade everyone. If they're not going to be 20 or 30 games the under only, 500. The only players I say off limits <laughs> to are Garrett Cole, DJ LeMayhew, for obvious reasons, yeah. Glaber Torres, and to an extent, to an extent, Rochelle. I'm not a Yankee fan. I'm telling you that no. it's not getting that bad. There, it's not going to get that bad. Yeah, no, it's, it's I bet you Yankees. 80 games in at a minimum, they'll have at least 45 wins. It's the Yankees. I bet you they'll have at least 45 wins, 80 games in at the minimum, and that's yeah. with everything be. And that would be an yeah. absolute disaster. I, I say slow down because we're what 12, like with 20 games in you so far. They're, they're six and eleven. Yeah. It's 17 very, games in. Yeah, it's very early in the season. It's very early. It's too early to hit the panic button. In a baseball season. 162 games. The fact that there are these numbskulls that honestly believe that the Yankees season is over 17 games in. 17 games in. That's like saying if you're, you know, watching the Giants and like two games in, they're 0 and 2. It's like, oh, yeah. this is over. Yeah, in 2007, they won a Super Bowl. Football's oh, different, though. In 2007, they won a Super Bowl after going 0 2. You can't, yeah, you can't like, just be so yeah. early in the season and it's just panic. Well, football's different, though, in that aspect, though. Football, a loss can be devastating. Yeah, but also, 17 game season now. 17 games. I don't like it. I don't like it. I, I like it for, you know, from a business perspective. 
Because they had to do this. The, to me, the ideal thing... They had would, to do this, though. Yeah, I understand it from a business perspective, but to me, the ideal, like, setup is 16 games, 17 pl- on the 17 playoff. Yeah, true. But what they could do is have no bye week in the playoffs. But I, I like the traditional way of two up. Uh, no, because the bye week, I think, discourages teams from, say, like, you have to fight for that seed, then you don't play your backups for a meaningless game in Week yeah. 17. Yeah. Because look at, like, what the Eagles did this year. It was disgusting. Oh, it was, so bad. It was anti-competitive. Yeah, they were clearly tanking because yes. they were, it's either, well, part of it was not their fault. Part of it was not their fault because everyone got hurt. And they had no offensive line. But still, like, it's anti-competitive. It's not the product that a professional football team should be trotting out. That's a fair point. There's not a sadder Islander than Kyle Palmieri. He had a glorious beard, man. It's a, it sucks that you have to shave it off, but it's the Lou Lamarillo culture. Yep. Had to do it. Had to do yeah, it. Lou has his ways. Lou has his ways. Lou has his ways. However, they did not shave for the entirety of the playoff bubble. They did not. Hmm. Confuses the hell out of me. I guess Lou lightens up for the playoffs now? I don't know, probably. He used to not for the Devils, that's for sure. Yeah, that's the thing. Because it's, because it's Uncle Lou. Yeah. Well, Lou is the Godfather, when you think about it. Yeah. Do you think Uncle Lou, or do you think Godfather? To me, he goes into Godfather. He's Bob. the Godfather, 100%. Yeah. He's like, the Godfather. Ever, like, hear the stories of, like, players having to, like, interact with him, like, when he's been Jersey and shit? Yeah. Like, the way he, like, presents himself, the way, like, his ideals, everything went. It's just starting it. Yep. He is in. Good. Isn't Georgiev the number one? Or is it Shisterkin? I think it's Shisterkin, but it's been like back Abs. and forth. Oh, that could have been. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful play by Pelic. <laughs> that was beautiful. <laughs> Pelic just grabbed that. Just popped and popped and grabbed the puck out of the air. Just. Here's one. Do you think what Philly? Down, do you think Philly down. fires AV? No. no, no, God, no. Despite this year. Despite this year, yes. <laughs> it's not his fault, but then again, it's an AV. It's an AV coach team, so yeah. What the hell do I know? Ooh, I felt good. Yeah, the Flyers are showing all the symptoms of a bad AV team. Yeah, I mean, you would know this better than. So, yeah. I mean, I did follow the Canucks during their Stanley Cup run, so. That was, such a, that was such a fun team to watch. The, two, uh, the 2011 Canucks. Well, that was also a great cup That was final. awesome. That was a great final. Yeah. That was an awesome final. <laughs> so much drama, so oh. much story. Every game had some, like, thing going on with all Alex that. Burrows, for one playoff run, was the best player in the NHL. Yeah. Unbelievable, that guy. He did everything he in his did power. everything that series. And the Canucks had a brutal path to the final. Can we? Is it, is there a better era of hockey, we can argue, than early 2000s NHL? Like, from like, what years? From under like, 2012. 2012 backwards. Actually, better. Lockout year 2013 backwards. Like, for, yeah. the, first, for the first LA yeah, Kings Yeah, because I would say lockout year was the first Kings Cup. The first King Stanley Cup, backwards. Yeah, I'd to like 2011, 10, 12, or 9, 8. Yeah, like I would say. 06 like, doesn't count I, for obvious reasons. No, I would say the 06 season was a good season. Yeah, sure, but the fucking Oilers. <laughs> hey, you had, you had a lot of upsets in the playoffs. Oh, my just God. That. Oh. The, for if you wanted the crazy playoffs, the 06 playoffs. Yeah, true. But, um. I don't know if we talked about this. Do you think the 93 Patrick Division semifinal, Islanders Penguins, back to back defending Stanley Cup champions, the Penguins, yeah. losing seven, biggest upset in NHL history? I would say it's up there, but. Rangers bias aside. <laughs> I would say it's up there, but Oilers over Red Wings 06. I can argue. Yeah, because that was. 94, a... 95. The Devils sweeping the 62 win Red Wings. Yeah, that's a shocker, that too. Sweeping. Yeah, to yeah. me, if you look at the roster of the 06 Red Wings and then the 06 Oilers, 
You realize yeah. that it, they won that series in six, not seven. Seriously. You have to give that to them. I don't know. I, the I only like the only the mark I one the I only think. mark I can put against that series was that Detroit's goalie in that series was Manny Legacy. Yeah, true point. True point. And that's Ooh, probably why they lost. Would Columbus, Tampa Bay, uh, sweep of the first round? Would that be a good one? Yeah. Because that's, that's a, a sweep one. of a, that's of a, a one of seed. That's a sweep of the President's Trophy winner. Yes. Yeah. We're not talking about just like the one seed in the playoffs. Like that's the a President's, President's Trophy. Trophy winners. Best team during the regular Slammed season. Slammed on favorite to win the whole yeah. thing. Everyone was talking about I Tampa. I did not trust Tampa to win the... I did not trust Tampa the second they won the President's Trophy. I'm like, they're going to lose to a team that's going to outwork them. That happens all the time with President's Trophy yeah, team. Yeah, all the time. Because a lot of time, a President's time. Trophy team is a team that looks incredible on paper. Yep. Like, Tampa is, like, pretty much the stereotypical The Oilers are the same team. thing. The Oilers of today, they would lose in the first round to... Oh, shit. Pollock. Oh, fuck. Oh, there we go. Nope. It's a little calmer off passing. I wouldn't trust That's the Oilers of today in, any, in a playoff series no, against any two guys. team. There were my two guys. All three now, when you think about it. Tyson Berry. Yeah, you could say three. But I feel like it's still McDavid's team. Yeah. Ooh, what's another good one? Uh. Could you say LA over Vancouver 2012? Vancouver was a President Trophy to win her in 2012. Yeah, true. Yeah. Even though we kind of saw Vancouver collapsing. Ooh, I got one for you. Uh, what's... How about this? Vegas. Do you trust Vegas this year? No. I don't trust Colorado either. Yeah, I don't... Honestly, I don't trust any team in that. Division. I do love the Devin Dubnik trade, though, for the Avalanche. No, it's a good trade That was them. really good. Because it fixes their biggest short coven. Goaltending. Yeah. Goaltending. Fixes their biggest short coven. How can you not love that? Oh, Joel Farabee's in the penalty box. I would say I trust Colorado more than I trust Vegas. Eh, Vegas is more scoring depth, though. When you look at Vegas, they have depth everywhere. But Vegas has a lot of guys who are very streaky at the same time. Yeah, true. Except Robin Leonard is the man, though. Yeah. I can give I'm you saying that. this is an Islander fan. I can give you that. I fucked with Leonard the year he was on the Islander. He would fight people. No, he he would get into fights. That's why it sucked when he didn't resign here. Because it's like, he got into fights with people. Like, literal fist fights. I didn't understand why he went to Chicago. Like, why Chicago, though? Like, I did not understand that decision at all at the time. No, I didn't either. Well, I am glad he has found a home in Vegas. Yeah, he, he needed that. It signed a five-year deal, too, with the yeah. Knights. Yeah, like, he has a home. Oof. Are you excited for Mortal Kombat? I am. I am, too. Oh. I think just for entertainment value. I mean, I, I'm thinking of, uh... I'm thinking of Street value? Fighter, that's why. I'm thinking of Street Fighter for big titties. <laughs> Is this Street Fighter? What, well, that's a big kid? No, I'm thinking yeah, of Dead yeah. or Alive. I'm thinking of Dead or Alive, that's why. <laughs> I'm thinking of it's random indie games. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> random fighting games. No, I swear to God. Now, Mortal Kombat's the king of fighting games to me. No, I swear to God, look. Dead or Alive titties. No, wait. Dead or Alive 6? No, not as good. What the hell? Ooh, Kaijo? No. Bad. Damn it. Oh, yeah, wait. What the fuck? Yeah. Dead or Alive 6. Swear to God. That's a fighting game. <laughs> oh, shit. I kid you not. The Japanese. It's always the Japanese, man. I mean, that's who makes all the fighting games. Mortal Kombat 10. Great times, that game. Oh my god. 
I remember I used to get so stoned and play that shit. Oof. However, Mortal Kombat is king, though. It Mortal is. Kombat is king. Anyone who says Street Fighter over Mortal Kombat needs to punch in the face. They need to play Mortal Kombat. They need to play Mortal Kombat. That's what I would say. We have so much shit going on today as well. What's wrong with a simple game of a, a chess or Mortal Kombat? Fatalities, man. Fatalities alone are why you have to yeah. put Mortal Kombat in. Oh, like did you fucking see that video of uh, the, the, the dipshit kid had like a piece of fish in his mouth <laughs> and he was like going to an air, air pima? In no. a fucking tank. Oh my! It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. I gotta find it. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll find it on Facebook. But uh, you know, you know what Arapaima is, right? Yeah. So yeah, fucking country critters. <laughs> they have those fish. They're big fuckers. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I gotta find it. It's beautiful though. It is gorgeous. There it is. So, look at this shit. This is beautiful. Look at this idiot. Look at this idiot. They're Moron. The fish. Watch the air pilot. And boom. <laughs> and then I responded with fatality. <laughs> that idiot deserves He's alive, it. though. He's alive. And I responded with Mortal Kombat voice <laughs> fatality. <laughs> Yeah, anybody who hasn't played that Mortal Anyone Kombat. Anyone who hasn't played Mortal Kombat in the last 10 years needs to get into Mortal Kombat. Yeah, yeah I don't care like what it costs. It's worth every penny to, to I, play I it. I fuck with Smash Bros, though. I will play Smash Bros to the, to the day I die. But Mortal Kombat... Oh, it's the gold standard. The of course. Who scored? Let's find out. Check the XPN. Let's so yeah. check the XPN. I'm going on right now. Oh, have you heard from Mike yet? He's going to Arizona. I haven't heard from him in a bit. He's going to Arizona, that's why. But, so, I'll tell you something just to, like, you know, see if you could guess who he scored. Is it Lafernia? No. Take a guess, I'm not going to hit somebody who uh, has a lot of my um, ire. Somebody oh, who is, Somebody who has irritated me a lot over the years. Is it Kreider? No. <laughs> somebody who is a holdover from the AB era. Oh, no. <laughs> I feel like I know who it is. Is it? Is it? Is it Stall? Is it Stall's not on the team no he's more. He's not. He's on Detroit, I think. Last That's I saw. That's right. He is. Um, but it plays the same position as Stall. Oh my god! Is it <laughs> fucking really? Is D'Angelo still there? No. I don't remember. I give up. Brandon Smith. Is it really? <laughs> <laughs> Carter Hart gave up a goal to Brandon Smith. This fucking guy. I know it's Elliot playing tonight. Oh, I was Elliot playing. <laughs> they don't even trust Hart even to go worse. against the Rangers. It's even worse. AB does not trust Hart to go against the Rangers nope. after last time. <laughs> no. Nope. I don't either. <laughs> you know, giving up nine goals can do that to you. Nine goals twice. To the same team. Oh, God. A team that's not even going to make the playoffs. Did you fucking uh, see any mock drafts uh, recently? Not Mac Jones good. is listed to go third to the 49ers. Ridiculous. Why? Why? I think he's like I the, love Mac he's like Jones, the fifth though. best quarterback. I love of Mac Jones, though. That's the problem. I would have taken him at 20 if the Seahawks. Traded I just don't feel like Bears. he's worth a third overall pick. He's not. And I think that's putting an unrealistic and unfair expectations on him. Justin Fields makes a ton of sense, though. Because he runs a natural zone scheme. I'm not even that high on Justin Fields. But I would think he would be a better fit for the 49ers well, than Shannon Mac Jones. Shout out to Shannon Hogan, by the way, for the Pella Posse. Those guys are the best in the business, and I definitely echo that. Also, I have to give a little shout out to the Pella Posse. Yeah! <laughs> Hashtag pillow posse. <laughs> oh, these guys are awesome. The Adam Pellet posse. <laughs> I can't believe Brandon Smith scored a goal. Unbelievable. He has the most games played of any Ranger defenseman by what? far. The GOAT. 
the fuck? Brendan Smith is the go. Oh, Capitals power play, of course. The Rangers have a very young defense. Is Ovechkin on the power play? Yes, there he is. And he's going to drift. He's going to go to the left. You know what used to frustrate He always goes to the left side. He's always there. He's always there. You don't have to tell me about Ovechkin. You have any idea how many Ranger uh, Capital playoff series I watched as a kid? Those are beautiful series, though. Those are Immaculate. Nice those are nice. Seven games, always. 2013, they beat the Capitals. Oh, I always remember when they came back 3-1 against the Capitals. Yeah, 2015. Yeah. The step-on goal. Oh, breakaway? Nope. And you know, one of the most memorable moments of the Ranger Capital like rivalry yeah, like in the, like, the early 2010s hard. was... Look at playing hard. You know my favorite memory of Carlson. My oh. favorite Ranger Capital memory of like those rivals was um twenty twelve. Game five, Rangers down two one, Brad Richard scored with six seconds yeah. left. And then Stahl sniped in the overtime winner. Oh, beautiful. Changed the course of that series. Martin Saint Lu- Martin Saint Louis though. Uh, uh it's uh Pittsburgh. Uh, I remember uh Montreal. Game yeah. five? Or is it four? Game four. With that beautiful goal? Yeah, in overtime, yeah. Yeah. All, St. Louis is an all-time great to me. In terms of NHL history, yes. Yeah. Probably the best undrafted player of all time. Yeah, Calgary really missed out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they could have had St. Louis and oh, the Ginla. Oh, beautiful. I think they could have had St. Louis and the Ginla on the same team oh, in the mid-2000s. That would be beautiful. He goes to Tampa and the rest is history. Yeah. Wins the Stanley Cup in 04. Yeah. That team, though. That team. Hey, that also speaks on longevity when you think of it. Because the Rangers, that was 2014, and he was a major contributor to that team, and that was 10 yeah, years after the Cup. Dude, by the way, has a team fallen harder than Dallas this year? No. I didn't trust but them. But Sagan way. hasn't been playing. Neither has J.D. Ben. Yeah. So yeah, that's your that's right there. Why they suck? Yeah. You take your two best offensive players off any team. Yeah, that'll do it. And Hugh Dobin hasn't panned out. Also. Yeah, Dylan, I, could, I saw shot. that a mile away. Yeah, of course. I like I liked his uh, quote though. We're not going home. <laughs> game five. <laughs> was it game seven against Vegas? <laughs> Something. <laughs> it was beautiful. We're not going home! <laughs> it was beautiful. <laughs> as far as like great European like Is it 2-0? It it's not 2-0. No, it's not. Yeah, because they don't have heart in. And like, Islander, Islanders have killed the power play for the Capitals. Mayfield shot. Mm. Nope. Scott Mayfield has been putrid this year, though. That's fact. He's been putrid this year. He has the weirdest shot, though. <laughs> well, I'm giving Brandon Smith for him. No. Nope. <laughs> Tony D'Angelo. Tony D'Angelo. <laughs> we trade a seventh round pick for Brayden Colburn. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'm like, a... I get leadership, but, like, damn. Colburn is what, 15 years in the league? He, he no longer, I don't think, is an NHL quality defenseman. I think no. the ship has sailed. The ship has sailed? Okay, and the ship, ship has sailed since last year, my man. I know. That he ship, won a cup. Man, that ship hasn't just sailed for Colburn, no matter how it is. It's in the ocean. It's like freaking... It's fucking like, out there, that's for sure. Yeah. It's like Titanic, just... The bottom of the ocean. Yeah, like, I feel like he would have been best off just winning the cup and just retiring you know what? behind I it. think they miss more. They miss Devon Taves. When they traded Taves, I'm like, oh, God, they're going to be stuck with Mayfield, are they? I didn't think it was the right move to trade Taves. No. I mean, they had to do it, though. They had to. It was our trade Taves or trade Pollock, which they couldn't trade Pollock. No. Hey, Cam. No, Cam's not there. Kim's chill, you would like. Wait, yeah. you met her, right? I don't think I have. Kim the Oz girl? She's yeah. really chill, by the way. Yeah, because I've barely been on lately. Cause yeah, I've been that's true. Bad been busy, yeah. I've also been laying off of, with you and Mike, though, because uh, you, you guys have both been busy like fucking crazy. Yeah. It sucks doing this shit by yourself. Eh, <laughs> it sucks. Because I'm not the easy, because I'm not the best talker when it comes to being by myself. 
I've been scrambling to get. You no, know, it's harder on. by yourself. I got Rachel on. I got fucking Rachel on. Because you need on. somebody you can like, you know, just bounce yeah, exactly. thoughts off of. Yeah, exactly. With you and me, it's like with you and me, it's like okay. You can like just do right it back and forth. Earth. Yeah, like we can just do it back and forth all the time. Now, I'm honestly, yeah. I'm always off Thursdays. Well, that helps. Yeah. That helps plenty. So. And then Fridays are usually my mischief night. Of course, for obvious reasons. Yeah. Because that's my other day I'm always off. Yeah, that's true. And mischief night, I probably, it's probably not the best night to reach me. You're on God knows what. <laughs> mm. no, honestly, usually it's just been lots of car sex. <sighs> Jesus. You the love mobile. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, Kim, if you're, Kim and her boyfriend are really fucking nice people, by the way. Yeah? Yeah, you were, you were like her boyfriend, uh, Jordan. He's a Ranger fan. Oh. He's a Ranger fire. fan. He's really chill, though. Yeah. Kim, sorry for doing this to you. Love you, girly. There she is. Right. Yeah, she's real. She's like famous for her, for her Islander theme lipstick. Kim, if you're listening, we love you. <laughs> no, but like in all seriousness, she's really chill. She's probably like my favorite Islander fan that I, and probably the best like hockey fan that I know. Yeah, not she one, knows her shit. Yeah, not one of the Islanders Twitter fans. She's the queen of Islander Twitter. Cause the I've, queen of Islanders yeah, Twitter. Because I've seen some amazing hot takes on there. No, but she knows her shit. She stays the fuck out of like she, shitty shit. She really does. Because honestly, looking at Rangers Twitter half the time, I want Rangers to Twitter are a bunch of assholes. No, so, I honestly wanted to join Twitter and just start putting them in their place on things. Don't join Twitter. I mean, you could, but it would be a fuck. You would you would fit right in with all the bullshit. <laughs> no, but I would be calling it out. My Twitter account is fucking weird. My Twitter is weird. Twitter is weird for me. But at the same time, I can give zero fucks. I, mean, I literally don't. Like, my fucking Twitter follows consist of all oh, these these ladies. Uh, I want you to do me a favor. Do you have Apple Podcasts on your phone? I think. I, is that part of Apple Music? Uh, it's Apple Podcasts. It's literally... Just it's podcast. The app is not a podcast. Phone is right above your, right under your ass. There it is. Yeah, go on your phone. Uh, it's a purple app that has like the fucking podcast. I see it. Yeah, there you go. Go in the search bar. Yeah, okay. Type in smut. I kid you not. These ladies are fucking hysterical. Smut. <laughs> I kid you. You would fit. You would fit right in, because I'm trying to get these two ladies, uh, Michelle and Lisa, are the, are the hosts of that podcast. They're hysterical. Just read the description of one of the episodes. Read the description. You will never forget it. Jesus. I kid you not. They are like their 30s and they're Canadian. Damn. I, we can Say make a quick pair, real quick, because you will. Because you will need Jesus after this, my man. <laughs> I think I need Jesus for a lot of reasons. <laughs> Me and Mr. Jesus are going to have to have a serious talk eventually. Now, would you go black Jesus or would you go white Jesus? Or Asian? Mm, gotta go for black Jesus, man. <laughs> I rolled a town here on an ass. <laughs> Yo, mama's ass. <laughs> <laughs> that family guy clip will forever be immortal. <laughs> Oh, that's why I said that, man. <laughs> All-time goals leader, Alex Ovechkin with 730. He's got 730 goals. Christmas. That's a first. But, no, you will love their podcast. You will love them. For the... <laughs> Fuck! 120 left in the first period, and the game is still scoreless. But, no, I'm trying to get these two on VS sessions eventually. But the, the problem is they're super fucking busy oh. with, like, their personal life and shit. But their Twitter alone is hysterical shit. Hysterical. 
Michelle, Lisa, if you two are listening. Get on. Get on here. <laughs> we could make a classic. Oh my god. I would immediately get all oh, they're 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 gorgeous women too. They are. They are. You know what? Give me a second. I'm gonna go to Twitter for this. I'm gonna go to Twitter. Uh Yeah. Here is Lisa. Okay. Okay. And where is Michelle? There she is. There's Michelle. <laughs> We've got a four on four now. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> You're such an ass. <laughs> They're probably listening like, what the fuck is this guy? <laughs> hey, I'm a great guy. I know you are. I'm one of the most deranged human beings they could ever be. Yeah, you were a deranged human being, but you know but you're a good guy though. Yeah. Um Matt Martin, Sydney Sison though, his wife. God bless her. She's she's hot though. She is. Ooh, speaking of, what is a first bout Hall of Fame sports wife? Ooh. Or, or lady, sports or, lady. Or lady. Good, that's a good one, though, because we... That. Before we start recording, we were talking about Tony Romo and his, and his uh, dating, uh, his life of dating Carrie Underwear and Jessica And you Simpson. had to put Tony Romo in there. You gotta put Tony there. Romo on there immediately. You got to. He's like an immediate one seed. Yeah, but the rest of this, let's keep, we have to do some deep thought on this. There's a lot, man. Russell Wilson. What's the arrow? Yeah. Uh, um, probably. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you could put. Matt Martin, though, is a very close. Is a is a good number three seed, though. He's a good three seed. With Sidney Sison, that's yeah. a good three seed. Boomer Boomer Sison has got some jeans, man. He's got some jeans. He does. He does. He's got the good jeans. I'll tell you that. Uh what's another good one? Fuck. Dwayne Wade. Gabriel Union? Yeah, I can that's do a, it. That's a good one I could seed. Go that's it. a good one seed. Oh, we, should, we went from first bout Hall of Famer to like fucking NCAA tournament automatically. Um, uh, that's a good one. Uh, Fuck. Yeah, this is hard. This is I, difficult. Yeah. Ooh. Does Tom Brady count? Well, Giselle? With Giselle? With Giselle? Yeah, I think you have to count that. Yeah, you gotta count that, yeah. probably. Um. Ever see Lane Kiffin? His ever, wife? Yeah, ever see her? Google yeah, Google, Google it. This. Cause I saw her once, she was a bad ass. Lane Kiffin wife, first search. <laughs> Wait, was that the first thing that came up? Smoke show, right? Oh, her ex wife. Yeah, can we have a Scotty and Larsa Pippen? Larsa yeah, sure. Pippen? Ooh, I got one for you. I got one for you. Sue Bird of the Seattle uh, Storm. Of the, Se- of the Seattle Storm. Okay. Not as good. Because it's the WNBA. Not as good. Got it. Gotta go. Um, Hot s- Sports Wives. Huh. We're actually doing this. This is how we're ending the show. Uh, let's see what we got here. Jay Cutler. How did I forget? Oh, yeah. How could we, how did I forget, how could we Jay forget, Cutler? forget Jay Cutler? How did I forget Jay Cutler? Uh, Giselle. That's obvious. Yeah. Reggie Bush has had his fair share of dimes. <laughs> that's right. Russell Wilson, Sierra. Duh. Yeah. Uh, Tony Gonzalez. Hmm. Yeah, look up October Gonzalez. You'll thank me later. Okay. Nandi Asamoah married Kerry Washington from Scandal? What? <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> uh... Sometimes I feel like Jesse James. Eric Decker. Yeah, yeah. that's a good one. Uh, Catherine. Do you remember AJ McCarron? Yeah. AJ McCarron oh, played yeah. Catherine Webb in oh, USA yeah. 2012. Oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot about that, man. Wow, that's 10 years ago. 
He was dating her when he was at Bama. Yeah. She was hot. She was hot. Uh, what else do we got? What else do we got? Cam Newton. Mm-hmm. Cam Proctor. Nah, not as good. Mm-hmm. Not as good. However, you know what's a good one? Ryan Tannehill. Who he got? Lauren Tannehill. Hey. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hey. Uh, Jeff Garcia. (laughs) I forgot about Jeff Garcia. Kyle Bowler. Oh, my God. Jesus. Not as good. Um... However, however, Matt Flynn, though, not too bad. He had, he, of course he could get something with that contract. Tony Romo, though. Uh, actually, Eli Manning would be a close second. Yeah, he had a smoke Eli show. Eli Manning's a yeah, good he, one. Yeah, he's with a smoke show. Yeah, he's with a smoke show. Uh, Chandis, Candace Crawford, Tony Romo. Yeah. Tony Romo has, has, just has a great record, man. He does. He really does. Uh, Drew Brees, that's a good one. That's a good one, Drew yeah. Brees. Brittany, Brittany Brees. Brittany Dunjaco. How the fuck you pronounce her last name? Uh, Alicia Curry. Yeah, probably. With Steph Curry. I could do that. Not as good, though, but... Because it's Steph, that's too easy. Chloe Kardashian and Tristan Thompson. I forgot about that. <laughs> I completely forgot I, about I that. I could never forget about that. Oh, that was funny. No, I remember that. Like, uh, let's see what we got here. LeBron James. Nah, that's no, good. Al Horford. No. It's always the NBA wives. Like Chris Bosh. She's a fucking midget next to him. <laughs> the hell? <laughs> you know why? Is he seven foot two? Could, you know, but you know why I got fun? Cause like small girls, you can like just pick them up, fucking like slam them and go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did I fucking tell you this story by the way? Um, so when I was in uh, high school, when I went to Bosies, uh, for for welding. So, we have this something called here called both these, which is like a tech school, like a trade school here in Long Island. Um, I was dating this girl at the time, and I'm not going to say who she was, but uh, I, d- I dated her, or I had a, like a flame with her or some shit, and she's like, oh, I'm not ready for a relationship. I'm like, okay, cool, fine. Uh, the next day, I see her with like three black guys. <laughs> <laughs> what she the got- fuck? <laughs> Oh, it's funny as hell though. It was funny when you think about it. Yeah, no, shit like that. Always know. happens to me though. That's the funny part. Always happens to me. Because I was talking to this other girl who, uh, you know, because I'm. Is, I,